uh, Daniel Ballard sitting here with Jurgen Maris from the Platinum Guild. Uh, we're in uh, Fine Gold this morning, both uh, patiently waiting for uh, our flasks to burn out for some projects we've each got going this morning. But okay. uh, we decided we would just chat a little bit about some platinum alloys and, and the implications for, for the consumer and people that want to use them and, and what the attributes of the various alloys are. So um, I think you wanted to mention um, uh, a website uh, right. address. We have a technical website, and uh, the website is uh, http www.pgi hyphen platinum hyphen tech which stands for tc t-e-c-h dot com so it's pgi hyphen platinum hyphen tech dot com and on that particular website all the papers that we ever published uh, that were presented on our platinum day symposium which is done every year in new york and a couple of times in los angeles as well are on that particular website under the heading technical publications and in this particular uh, technical publication there is a paper done by craig normandu uh, a very well-renowned, well-respected uh, metallurgist for Imperial Smelting in Canada, who talked about uh, platinum alloys for casting, and he had just developed a, a, a hard cast alloy which uh, casts at 160 vickers, uh, as you compare that to platinum cobalt, which has 135. It is quite a an advancement, considering that. Uh, the harder something is, the less it will scratch in daily work. It's got some real durability advantages, so sure. Really advantage. So what happened is. Among these particular uh, 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 paper, there were, uh, were some tests done to determine how long it takes for uh, a gold ring, a platinum ring, to dull in everyday wear. So when you buy a ring, it's nice and shiny. How long does it take from the nice and shiny to, oh my God, my ring is dull? Uh, and the way this was done, uh, Greg would make five washers using five different platinum alloys, iridium, iridium 9010, ruthenium, cobalt, and his hard cast alloy, and create these washers. They were about the size of a nickel. They were then machined to a mirror-like cloth finish, so they're all identical in size and in weight and in, in polish. And then you took a nickel coin and you held it next to, to the washer so that you could read the date mm -hmm. on the mirror of that polished surface. Sure. And then it was put, these five washers were put into an abrasive agent where they were taken out every 10 minutes and then the, you hold the coin and the idea was you stop when you no longer can read the date reflected that coin date reflected on the surface which is okay. a pretty good indicator yeah. you know yeah. it's, a, it's pretty scientific if you think about it so using that they found out that platinum iridium 950 was the fastest one to dull so that was used as a standard and then it was compared to the other. And in that particular thing, what came out is absolutely fascinating. The platinum ruthenium took 2.8 times as long to dull at, as did 95.5 iridium. So if you were a manufacturer and you were to make a platinum product that's going to have a polished surface on, you're going to sell it to your customer. After one year's time, for example, the platinum iridium 950 ring would be totally scratched up and it would take 2.8 years to do the same for ruthenium. Which would you rather have? You know, and there are evidence of evidence of evidence like that why the harder platinum alloys are a better choice than 95.5 iridium. So the people that cast 95.5 iridium, and just to be aware of that, has a, it has a hardness of 80, 80. Pure gold and pure platinum have a hardness of, of 40. Okay. Yeah. So if you were to use gold as a as a uh, as a uh, 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 you know mental comparison, you're making 22 karat gold when you're using 95.5 platinum iridium. Yeah. So yeah. if you have a 22 karat gold ring, how long in everyday wear do you think it holds its shape and holds its form and doesn't scratch? Yeah. Okay. So for me, 95.5 iridium is a fabulous alloy for fabrication. It's a fabulous alloy for for manufacturing, uh, uh, if you if you stretch it and hammer it and work on it, so get your work nice hardening. Striking, get your work hardening. hardening it, but for casting and if you don't do anything else to it, just cast it and wear it. It is an absolute no-no. And, and it won't heat treat to a great degree either, it will it? Doesn't at all. No, it doesn't heat no. it at all. You can't age it. You can't do anything with it. What you can do is you can put it in a tumbler for a week and see if you can harden the surface a little bit. Yeah. But then that's, that's not a good. That's thing. still just just a, again that's just another kind of a work hardening, isn't it? Uh, yes, and we have a situation where a lot of people are have negative feelings about cobalt. I personally don't understand it, but people do. 
and uh, we're trying to get past that barrier. But you know what the jewelers are. They they if it's new and they they don't they don't like it, they won't change. It's very difficult to do. So while platinum cobalt is the finest casting alloy, and if you want fine detail, there is no none better. It is really having a hard time in the field because people don't want it because it oxidizes a little bit, it's magnetic a little bit, and they don't like that. But platinum ruthenium, if you get past the learning curve of casting it, and if you can repeatedly cast it without porosity, which is just a matter of understanding the alloy, then you got yourself one of the finest alloys in the world. Yeah. It truly is. Yeah. You know, I know the hard cast alloy that Greg did is a nice try, but it's it's, it's another exotic. It's an uh, it's an alloy that when you when you when you want to refine it later on, you have to deal with the issues. When you want to when you want to, it does oxidize a little bit as well because yeah. they have it has a little gray sheen to it. Uh, so if you want a trouble free, all around alloy, an alloy that you can use for die striking, for fabrication, for machining, really the choice is platinum ruthenium. I, I, I couldn't agree with you more in, ter in terms of the platinum ruthenium. Uh, uh, I, it becomes the source of the fewest trouble calls. Now, now understand my perspective uh, um, is a little different. Sitting at a desk most of the time and, and having the pleasure of, of, of doing some, some uh, research and experimental and, and sort of recreational work down here. But um, what makes my phone ring with bad news, with a question, a guy that's gotten into a jam? Mm -hmm. And, and platinum ruthenium is very, very rarely it. One of the things I like about it is it's, it seems a, a little less subject to uh, minor levels of contamination compared to some of the others that, that yeah. jewelers ordinarily run across. My objection, um, and, and I know you and I gently disagree a little bit here on, on the cobalt, uh, um, I completely acknowledge how well that, that material casts. Um, what I object to is more, I think, an issue of education and marking than anything else. And for example, we had uh, uh, some metal come in the other day. It was a refining lot. And uh, the rings were actually stamped S+, plus, in addition to the, the platinum hallmark and the manufacturer's hallmark, as it should be. And I was thrilled. And, and the funny thing about S+, plus is it's another one of these heat-treatable, lower-flow temperature alloys. Of course, uh, Steve Kretschmer developed and, and uh, Hoover sells it, uh, trademark and all that, all that good stuff. But, um, because of the lower flow temperature, um, a jeweler can be surprised by that and ruin, damage a, a customer's piece, and that's what I object to. And, and I think that was the heart of, of my most telling objection to cobalt, and I think all the exotics. When the jeweler gets surprised and gets into a jam, um, you've got a labeling issue that, that, or an education issue that's, that's got to come up there. And one of the advantages of a, of a ruthenium uh, platinum alloy, for example, is that the liquid of solidus is very, very narrow. So what happens is when the metal cools, it cools now. If you are a, uh, a, a caster and you understand what the metal can do and you, 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 you try to eliminate uh, the variables and create constants so that you can mm -hmm. repeat the process, you will find a setting and you will find a, 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 a method that will cast ruthenium trouble-free, porosity-free, or almost porosity-free, and in wh where you get the best results. You will write that down and this is what you do every time and then you'll find you have to get over the learning curve. Yeah. If you think you can go and, and, and change from A to B and then B is as good as A, it's not going to happen. And what happens is people don't have the patience and then they get upset and then they say, well, the metal is no good. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's, there's generally little patience for surprises and for, and for, and for new materials because surprises by def definition come in with them. Um, and of course we see that with Sothers casting grains investments right across the board. Uh, consistency, of course, is absolutely what you got to have going um, on the production side. Um, where some of the most interesting uh, tricks of the trade, I think, are found are the guys that have no shot at having any consistency at all. And that's the guys, I mean, the custom jeweler. Yeah. Um, they, they don't have the luxury of, hey, this season this ring's doing great and we're going to make 10,000 of them. Right. Um, it's, the, boy, I'll tell you what, before the molds cool, they're casting just about, and it's out the door just about, and they'll never see that shape again. But if you, but if, you <laughs> if you take a look at, at what's out there, and you take a look at a company such as Tiffany. Mm -hmm. Now, Tiffany is the Mercedes-Benz of jewelry making. Everybody, oh, will, everybody will say that. Now you ask them, what alloy do you use? Mm -hmm. And guess what they'll tell you? They'll it's tell you platinum pl ruthenium. Platinum ruthenium. Okay? Now, if... They think it's good. Yeah. Believe you me, yeah. the little guy should think it's You're good. You're sure not going far wrong there. That's yeah. that's quite exactly. quite so. Quite so. Now, I, I still believe that that uh, if I wanted to cast fine detail, if I wanted to cast 
things like that, to me there is nothing better than Cobalt. And and I like the fact that, that the company is such a stellar uh, is using COBOL and they're staying with it because they have the most success with it. And I think if you take a, a look at a bench jeweler that knows how to work with gold, they can deal with a little bit of fire scale. They can deal with that. I mean, it's just that they don't want to. And, yeah, and, and I just true. wish they would look at that. Yeah, that's very true. Let's talk about some of the parts we, we depend on, or, our, or our, our clients certainly depend on. Um, what do you like to see uh, uh, prong heads made out of? Which platinum alloy do you like to see diamonds set in? And I mean a premier stone in a premier ring, like a peg head. Okay, if I like, I like a peg head uh, to be out of a heat treatable platinum alloy. And I'll tell you why that is. Uh, peg heads are made out of multiple pieces that are put together. Yep. And these multiple pieces are then soldered at about 1500 on a belt. Yeah. And at the time they come out the other side, they're annealed. So now you have a situation where a peg head that's soldered onto a, a platinum ring, if you put a little bit of pressure on it with the burr, it'll twist on you. Yeah. If you want to set a stone, the prongs can bend. As a matter of fact, I don't believe that a peg head as such is a platinum setting. I think it's a white gold setting that's now being made in platinum because people in, like it to be in platinum and that look happens to be the look 